All right, guys. So I've got my Z-axis here, and I've got it taken apart. And now it's time to assemble the bearing block. Again, we're using angular contact bearings. I've cleaned these up earlier and made sure there wasn't any kind of debris in there. Um, there's, I'm not sure if all bearings, all the bearings are the same, but. On this side, you can see the number. It says 7202B. And that side is what has the, on the outer race, has the little lip that the bearing presses against. But when we put it on our ball screw, we're going to be pushing we're going to be squeezing the inner bearing and we want to squeeze the inner bearing up against that side so it's going to go on like this well that yeah, doesn't want to go on but it's going to go on like that like so and then we're going to have a spacer that I machined earlier and I'll show you that video too and it's going to go like so and then this bearing also is, needs to be pushed up against where it's marked 7202 and because so the two numbers need to face each other like so and then when we put what we're going to do is we're going to put a bushing on there and then the nut will actually push on the inner race up against the shoulder here on the bearing block and that's going to give us our uh, the right tension so what we need to do to assemble this is I'm just going to grease these bearings and get it all put together now what I've got here is just a syringe with some regular you know tube grease in there I know um, for high speed people recommend the Kubler I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly um, but that's not really necessary because this is not going to move fast at all uh, these won't be turning uh, very fast at all so not really too concerned about this but I do want to make sure that I get some grease down in there so what I'm going to do is just squeeze grease down in there and work it in the bearings like so Go around again. And we'll do this back side as well. really get the grease forced in there I want to make sure that they're greased really well because they don't come greased and they're not sealed. Okay, so now that I have my bearings greased, we're just going to drop them down in there and I'm going to put the 
bearing number facing up. I'm going to put a spacer in there. Now I just machined these out of aluminum. Um, and you want the spacer to be thick enough so that when your bearings go in there when you stick your bearings in there and you put your bearing cover on and tighten it up that the bearing cover keeps those two outer races pushed together and you don't have play now if you feel like this is not pressing down very much and you, you feel like it's a little loose you can cut yourself a shim I cut this shim out of a coke can it's really thin and I think it would have been okay but it just feels like it's just a little small. There's a little play in there, so I just put the shim in there. And now I can tell for sure that the bearing cover is sticking up a little bit. And that's uh, what I want. So I'm going to put the bearing cover on there. I'm going to screw it into place. like so and that's how we build up our bearing block then we're going to take our ball screw this is for my z-axis just slide that through like so and then we're going to take the bushing that I turned. This is steel. And you can see that it just barely sticks past the cover here. Then we're going to put our jam nut on there. Now I ordered these jam nuts from Chi when I ordered the ball screws. So make sure you ask for these. And I want to get it snug. Spin it around. And I just want to get it just where it's snug. And then I'm going to tighten this set screw up. Get an Allen wrench. Alright, and we want to tighten this up, but we don't want to torque it down. We just want it snug, really. And you can kind of that feels good right there. Then we're going to tighten this set screw down. I'm going to screw the jam nut on and that'll keep that locked. Okay. Feels good. Nice and smooth. Pretty happy with that. Now our coupling is uh, had to, the coupling I had to kind of machine a little bit because it wanted to be a little difficult. Let me see if I can show you here. 
Okay, so one end is fatter than the other. Um, I think this is 12 millimeter and this is 15 or no this is 13 millimeters and this is 12 excuse me 14 and 12 that's right now the inside plastic did not go all the way to the center it stopped because it, the center portion plastic portion was only 12 millimeters too so I had to stick it on the lathe and kind of make that fatter I don't know if you can see inside there or not so that it would go down as far as it could on my Z shaft and also I removed the keyway off the Z shaft we won't be using that keyway I just took it out and I'm just going to stick this on go down as far as it'll go and Okay, make sure it's tight. This is the only thing that holds this coupling on. Um, we'll see how that's going to work out. Should be okay, but we'll see. All right, so now that we have our coupling on and our bands are in, uh, now we just need to orient this towards the front, the top. Uh, and then this will slide down. This goes on. And if everything's lined up perfect, then it'll go on just as smooth as mine just did. Hopefully yours turns out just as good. And then all we do, do now is just tighten these. Screws up here. Okay, now we just need to tighten this set screw here. Okay, so we can see I've got the Z axis assembled. And so now we'll work on the X and the Y axis and we'll get those assembled.
Okay, this bottom screw right here is hidden behind here. So what I did was I drilled me an access hole right in the side so that I can get to this set screw. Maybe. Okay. I'll raise it up just a little bit. Like so. Tighten these couplings down. Very nice, very smooth. That finishes up the Y axis. Alright guys, well as you can see we finished up our mounts. We have our X axis and our fixed end. We have our Z axis and we have our Y axis. They all turned out really nice. Very satisfied with the overall way they look. And there wasn't really any complications as far as alignment. So I'm really, really satisfied with that. In the next video, I'm going to tear down the Precision Matthews. Mount these up. Make sure that everything, all the mounting holes and all are good. And then we've got to start taking measurements for the coupling that connects to the ball nut. So stay tuned for that video. Uh, there's still a lot more to do. Unfortunately, when you're doing these builds for the first time and you don't have anything to reference, it's all trial and error. So I'll have to tear the mill down, take measurements for the ball nut mounts, Probably reassemble the Precision Matthews, machine those ball nut mounts, break it back down, and mount them. So, maybe a few more weeks before we can actually see these things running. But, I'll try to get them mounted on there and get some photos so we can see how it's going to look. I really appreciate all the feedback I've gotten throughout this build. Please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, thumbs up if you like the video, thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.